The loss of Volodar increases the pressure on Ukrainian troops in the Donetsk region who are suffering from a shortage of ammunition and personnel since significant resources are directed at holding positions in the Kursk region, which is in Russian territory, writes The Times. The Russian victory, though largely symbolic, could pave the way for further gains north and east of the city. While those gains are unlikely in the coming months as the rainy season and winter set in, President Putin's apparent military goal of capturing the entire Donetsk and Luhansk regions is moving somewhat closer, the publication said. However, Russian military bloggers did not celebrate the capture of Volodar, as many doubt that the Russian army can quickly advance further into the territory controlled by Ukraine, writes The Times. The publication noted that Volodar is heavily mined, so Russian occupiers need time to clear the city of mines and ammunition that did not explode. In addition, further advancement of the Russian Federation will be impeded by Ukrainian defense positions to the northeast of the city. Russia's capture of Volodar is unlikely to fundamentally change the course of offensive operations in the west of Donetsk Oblast, mainly because Volodar is not a particularly important logistical hub and also because Russian troops control most of the main roads leading to Volodar. The Institute for the Study of War emphasized. At the same time, the Times added that in order to capture Pokrovsk, the Russian invaders must maneuver in open terrain for about 30 kilometers. The city is of strategic importance due to its railway connection, and this means that an assault on Pokrovsk, which is under constant shelling by the Russian Federation, is unlikely, the publication's analysts assured. As reported, the Ukrainian defense forces have withdrawn from the city of Volodar in Donetsk Oblast. The Kortitsia Special Operations Command added that as a result of the enemy's actions, there is a threat of encirclement of the city. At the same time, the commander of the battalion of the strike UCAV Achilles of the 92nd Separate Assault Brigade, named after Ivan Sirko, Yuri Fedorenko, stated that the loss of Volodar is not critical for Ukraine. At the same time, he noted that Russia continues to gradually implement the plan for the occupation of Ukrainian territory. The enemy will try to advance in the near future by means of a creeping offensive, one way or another, with losses that are disproportionate to the results they receive on the battlefield. As for the loss of certain populated areas, they are determined in particular by military expediency and, most importantly, by preserving the lives and health of our servicemen, Fedorenko noted. Russia's drone attacks on Ukraine have reached a new intensity in September. Russia launched more than 1,300 long-range Shahed drones, far more than in any previous month. And as Forbes analyst David Gambling writes, the continued high number of drone attacks suggests that Ukraine is set for its worst winter yet. At the same time, as the analyst writes, there are growing signs that in addition to the Iranian-developed Shaheds, Russia is using at least three other types, some of which are supplied directly from China. The heart of the attack is the Shahed-136, known in Russia as the Geran-2, an Iranian-designed attack drone. The Shahed is slower, less powerful and easier to shoot down than traditional cruise missiles, but it costs far less and can be produced on a large scale. Russia, however, has been continually modifying the basic Shahed. New versions have at least three types of warheads, and some are equipped with 4G modems that communicate via Ukraine's cellular network. Most recently, a Shahed was discovered with a Starlink link. They have also recently been coated in black paint to make them less visible at night. The Wall Street Journal estimates that Russia intends to produce 500 Shaheds per month. However, the number of drones currently being launched suggests that other types are now in use. Italmas drones are several types of drones produced by Esokan. Product 54 is a loitering munition with a range of over 200 kilometers. Product 52 and Product 53 are two versions of the Lancet tactical kamikaze drone and Product 55 is a jammable FPV kamikaze. Images of another new Russian drone appeared on social media in July. It is also smaller than the Shahed and has a different configuration. According to the Russians, the new drone is called the Gabura and can perform reconnaissance or diversionary missions in addition to kamikaze attacks. Given that the Gabura was shot down near Kiev, it can fly at least several hundred kilometers. Ukrainian sources suggest that the Gabura's primary role is as a diversionary maneuver.
The most worrisome new drone is the Garpia 3, the analyst notes. According to Reuters, the Garpia 3 was developed by a subsidiary of Russia's state-owned arms company, Almas Ante, and has a range of about 2,000 kilometers with a 50-kilogram warhead. Not only does the Garpia 3 use Chinese components, it will also be manufactured in a factory in China, according to Reuters. If China does use its drone manufacturing capacity to supply Russia with strategic weapons, the number of drones will be limited only by Russia's ability to pay for them. Gambling notes. Ukraine has been successfully repelling attacks by 400 to 600 shaheds per month, but repelling twice or three times that number with dwindling stockpiles of surface-to-air missiles will be a more difficult task.